Hi everyone, my name is Sakanya Joshi. I'm an AI ML Solutions Consultant, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about LLM matching solutions. We're gonna be diving deep into chunking, embeddings, and similarity metrics. So let's talk about LLM-based matching and why it's powerful. Instead of just looking for exact words, this approach compares the meaning behind pieces of text. So it's more about understanding ideas than matching keywords. There's a few common ways this is used. First, intelligent document FAQ search. This means that users can ask questions in their own words and the system finds the most relevant answers, even if the phrasing is totally different. Next, enhanced chatbots. With LLM-based matching, bots can pull the right information based on what someone means, not just what they type. It also helps with duplicate detection, finding content that overlaps or says the same thing in different ways. And finally, it plays a key role in something called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. That, that's when tools like ChatGPT search for accurate data before responding, so the answers are grounded in real information. In short, LLM-based matching lets machines understand language more like we do. Now let's talk about chunking and why it matters. One important thing to keep in mind is that LLMs and embedding models have token limits. For example, the text embedding three large model maxes out at about 8192 tokens. So if we just try to pass in an entire document without thinking it through, we'll quickly run into those limits, and that breaks the model's ability to understand or respond effectively. That's where chunking comes in. By splitting documents into smaller, manageable pieces, we unlock several benefits. First, it allows for fine-grained retrieval. We can zero in on the most relevant sections instead of sifting through the entire document. It also helps preserve context, which is crucial when we want to generate accurate and coherent responses downstream. Plus, it gives us better relevant scoring since we're evaluating smaller, more focused chunks rather than broad, noisy inputs. Now, of course, there's a trade-off. The more granular the chunks, the better the precision, but it can come at the cost of performance, like increased latency or reduced recall. So it's always a balancing act depending on the use case. When we talk about chunking strategies for large language models, it's important to recognize that all splitting methods are not created equal. The way you can chunk text can have a big impact on retrieval quality, context retention, and generation accuracy. Let's start with the most basic approach, fixed size token windows. This method breaks text into equal blocks, say 512 tokens at a time. It's fast and was common in early RAG prototypes, but the downside is that it often splits in awkward places, like in the middle of a sentence or a thought, which can break meaning and hurt performance. A slight improvement is the sliding window method. Here you overlap each chunk by a percentage, maybe 30%, to preserve continuity between chunks. This helps maintain the flow between sentences and paragraphs and reduces context loss. Next is semantic aware chunking, which is a bit smarter. Instead of splitting based on size, it uses natural language processing to break content along sentence or paragraph boundaries. This makes the chunks more meaningful and easier for the model to work with. Popular tools here include Spacey, NLTK, TextSplit, and Langchain's Recursive Character Text Splitter, which uses a recursive approach to split based on increasingly small separators. More, for more structured documents like HTML, Markdown, or PDFs, structure where chunking works best. It splits content based on documents' actual structures such as headers, lists, items, and tables. This approach helps preserve hierarchy and context, which is especially important in technical or formatted documents. And finally, there are other basic techniques like sentence level or character level splitting. These are often used as fallbacks or in combinations with more advanced methods. So the key takeaway is, the more your chunking is of the text structure and meaning, the better your results will be downstream, whether you're doing search, retrieval, or generation. So what are embeddings? The core idea is that embeddings transforms raw text into a high-dimensional vector, which is a list of numbers that captures the meaning of the text, not just the exact words. Now, why is this useful? Well, LLMs and search systems don't actually compare pieces of text word for word. Instead, they convert that text into vectors, which are embeddings, and then compare the semantic similarity between those vectors. This is what um, allows us to find similar texts, cluster-related content, um, as well as it powers semantic search and ranking, which is retrieving the most relevant information based on meaning and not just the keywords. 
So as you can see to the visual to the right, we can see how we have our word, which is converted into a high dimensional vector, which is also known as a word embedding. And then it is um, reduced in dimensionality for us to understand how king and queen and man and woman are closer together in context rather than, for example, man and queen. Same thing with puppy and dog. These two words are closer together in context than houses and cat. So how do chunking and embeddings work in this whole process? So as you can see in this chart, we have our document, which uh, afterward we use a chunker to break that text into different pieces. Um, and once we have different sets of chunks for the document, that gets all stored in a vector database. So a lot to elaborate on that, suppose you have a PDF. Um, we first extract the content, um, break it apart into small pieces of text or small chunks. And then afterward, we can use the embeddings that we previously learned um, in order to store it in the vector database. So once we have a vector database of word embeddings, now you can essentially query that so you can input a question and it will look through this vector database to find the closest chunk. So this is when the similarity metrics come into play. Afterward, it'll also look at your prompt. Um, suppose you want to summarize some content or you have a specific question, it'll look at that prompt, pass that into the LLM, and then the LLM will use that closest chunk as well as the prompt um, that you inputted um, into generating that final response. So that's how the whole flow works and that's how um, chunking and embeddings kind of go hand in hand um, in terms of generating uh, a response from the large language model. When we talk about comparing embeddings, those vector representations of text, we're really measuring how close or similar two pieces of text are in meaning. There are some different ways to do this and each has its own use case. So let's go through the, the most common use case. So firstly, we have our cosine similarity. Um, this is the one that you'll hear most about. Um, it measures the angle between two vectors, not their size. It tells us how similar the direction of the two texts are. So even if they're different lengths, we can still compare their meaning. The score usually ranges from zero to one, where one means very similar. Then we have dot product, and this is used a lot inside transformer models. It takes the actual values in the vectors and multiplies them together. It works well when vectors are trained in a specific way, like in attention mechanisms or scoring systems, but it can be sensitive to how big the vectors are. Then we have Euclidean distance. This is kind of like measuring the straight line distance between two points. It's more sensitive to the length or magnitude of the text embeddings, which is why it's not always ideal for comparing meaning alone. And finally, we have Manhattan distance, also called the taxicab distance, which adds up the absolute differences between values in the vectors. Imagine navigating a city grid. It tells you how far you travel if you could only move in a straight line. It's simple and sometimes used when you care more about raw differences than direction. So now let's talk about Snowflake Cortex Search. How does Cortex Search fit into all of this? Cortex Search is Snowflake's fully managed hybrid search service for text data. What makes it powerful is that it, it combines the best of both worlds, vector search for understanding meaning and keyword search for precision. So you get more accurate and relevant results through hybrid retrieval. And the best part is that you don't have to worry about managing any of the underlying complexity. There's no need to build or maintain your own embedding pipelines, no infrastructure to manage, no indexes to refresh manually, and no tedious ranking or tuning required. It's all handed for you. Cortex Search is purpose-built for modern use cases like retrieval augmented generation, enterprise search, and AI-powered chat applications. It's designed to let you focus on building great experiences without being stuck in the weeds of search engineering. So as you can see in this uh, visual below, we have our query. Um, we can see how Cortex Search has a hybrid retrieval system. Um, and then once the contextual documents are uploaded, it uses the prompt as well as our own Cortex LLM function called Cortex Complete to generate a contextualized response. So here's how a RAG pipeline works using Cortex Search together with LLMs. And the best part is it all runs directly within Snowflake. 
First, you store your text data, whether it's documents, PDFs, or any unstructured content right in Snowflake tables. Next, you create a Cortex search service on the column or columns where your text lives. From there, Cortex takes over. It automatically chunks and embeds your text using the model you choose. Then it indexes both the vector embeddings and the keywords, enabling hybrid search. When it's time to query, you can do it with uh, a REST API or the Python SDK. Cortex handles hybrid retrieval, so you get results based on meaning and keywords, and then applies semantic re-ranking to return the most relevant results. Finally, those search results get passed as a context in the LLM to generate answers, summaries, or responses. And it's all fully integrated with Cortex LLM functions, so you can easily plug it into chat apps, summarize, summarization workflows, or any AI-driven experience, all without leaving Snowflake. So here's a sample script of the chunking technique in Cortex Search. Um, so we can see here that it uses the Snowflake Cortex function split text recursive character. And this function essentially splits long text into smaller chunks, optimized for embedding or search indexing. So it recursively breaks the text based on a list of separators. And um, since we have, you know, our markdowns, we know that it splits the content based on headers or titles um, very effectively. We can also see how this 2000 characters, that's how big we are defining the chunk as. And we also have a 300 character overlap. Um, so this helps preserve context and improves retrieval and downstream LLM performance. So this is just an example of um, you know, how we've done it in a previous Cortex search tutorial. All right, so in conclusion, you know, we talked about a wide variety of topics related to LLM-based matching. First, we start with chunking. This breaks large documents into smaller, meaningful pieces so that they can be processed effectively by embedding models. Next, we generate embeddings, which capture the semantic meaning of each chunk, not just the words, but the ideas behind them. Then we use similarity metrics to compare these embeddings and retrieve the most relevant content with high accuracy. And, you know, we can kind of see this in action um, since all of, the, all of this is powered by Snowflake Cortex Search, a fully managed hybrid search service that combines vector and keyword search so you get the best of both worlds without managing any infrastructure. Ultimately, this entire pipeline enables LLM-based matching where systems can go beyond simple keyword lookups and actually understand and match meaning, making your search, chat, or RAG applications much more intelligent and context-aware. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and feel free to let us know if you have any questions.